Good evening and welcome. Mark Beard, first in the house, Leanne Vaughan, first, second, Graham Allison, Tracy Dodds, Christopher, Oliver Skinner, Abigail French, Tim Weston, Sean Raymond. Good evening to you, Sean. Peter Piper, Gary Marriott, Nigel, Mark, Julian Lees, Denver Skinner. And we have a special guest tonight. We have a special guest all the way from, I don't freaking know where he lives. You'll you have to tell you. I don't know what he does for a living. You'll have to ask him. Anyway, people in the group will know him. Let's have a guess. You can guess who it is before our special guest comes on tonight. Who do you think we've got on for a special guest tonight? Have a guess. Come on. He's sitting in the wings waiting for you lot. Especially waiting for you lot. No comments. Is anybody there? Can anybody hear me? Is nobody talking? Oh, Susie. Huh? Anyway, our special guest tonight is Steve Pace. Never been on the live feed tonight. Kevin Polhill, good evening to you, sir. So we have Steve Pace in the house. So everybody say good evening to Steve then. Let's just see if you're awake, if, if you're actually listening, or shall we just talk to ourselves? Shall we just... Awesome. Bloody awesome, says Abigail French. Hi, Steve, says Gary Marriott. Graham Allison just... He's got good evening, the... everybody. He's just got the clap, Graham Allison. <laughs> Super duper. So good evening, Steve. How are you, boy? Very well. Thank you, Chris. Can everybody hear Steve? Can everybody hear Steve? Unfortunately, in Cornwall at the moment, it's pissing it down. <laughs> and you can hear it hitting the roof in the shed. Yeah, weather's shit all over the place, and it is here in sunny. Um, Portsmouth as well. Sunny Portsmouth, that's where Steve's from. I knew he was somewhere down that way. Yeah. Evening, Steve. Everyone's saying everybody's in here. Right, Magic Steve. So, how long have you been following me, Steve? Right, well, I first come across you back in 2016, I think it was. Was that eight years? Eight years, is that all? It feels like forever. Eight, eight years, yeah. So, um, did I have black? Uh, did I have black hair then? Did I have black hair or, or fucking grey hair? Look like again? No, I'm sure you look like Pepe Le Pew, the skunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't look a lot different now, Chris. I, I think you might have had a few darker hairs, but other than that, you, you're exactly the same. Still, freaking split mattress, right? Here we go then. <laughs> So, Steve, what what made you follow me for so long, and uh, what 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 gave you the sort of uh, desire to want to learn to train a dog the Corleone way? Well, I'll start off with like I've always had dogs since I, like my own dogs since I was about fourteen years old. Mm. So they've ranged from like terriers to lurchers to boxers to. Packageable terriers, you know, that, that that type of dogs I've had over the years. The, the terriers I've had, I've always worked and I've always been out in the countryside and you know, doing them for stints and that. Um, and then when my kids got older, they started to go beating. So I used to take them to the to the shoot, drop them off, and then go back and pick them up. Yeah. So then I sort of like got involved. They said, well, why don't you just stay here you know, rather than drop the kids off, stay here and get paid and come beat it. So then I got into the beating side of it, and obviously, like they, like they do to you, they start talking into getting the dog. So that's and then got the first spaniel, and then that's how I started getting onto your videos. Right. Obviously, I wanted to train, train the dog myself, and um, you know, obviously get it to a good stand. When I get into something that I like doing, I like to try and be as best as I possibly can doing it. Yeah. So obviously, found your videos. Liked what I saw. Um, been down to you, I think, five times over them eight years. The one-to-one -one training. Um, yeah, and just thoroughly got, you know, enjoyed the training. Got on board with it. Listened to what I said. Put the hard work in, and uh, was able to train. I've now got three spaniels myself, two coppers and a Springer, and been able to train them to what I think is a standard to be able to work in the shooting field so i'm very very pleased with what i've got do you think thank you very much do you think good standard or exceptional standard steve and i'm not trying to blow your trumpet here 
do you think that you've you've now mastered how to train a dog to do an exceptional standard? Well, definitely you. Well, you've definitely given me the skills to be able to suss out different types of dogs and get them, you know, and get the best out of the dogs that I'm training. Yeah. So whether that's exceptional or whatever, you know, I'm not going to blow smoke up no nose. I think that's for other people to, you know, see if they like what I do and. You must, you must have, a, you, you, you must have a rough idea, Steve, with all the people that you follow and and the people you watch as well all over the internet. Um, you must look at your own dog and think, "What well, my standard is very, very high." Scary Marriott says you're too, you're too modest, Steve. That's that's the nice thing about Steve. He is he is a modest guy. It's it's nice for other people to appreciate what you've got and give you the feedback for that. That's how, you know, that's how I like to do it. Like I said, I don't really blow and smoke up my own arse. That's just not me. But. Yeah. So, Steve, did you like the fact that I asked you if you would like to be definitely too modest, says Tracy Dodds. Hey, look at Tracy. Um, Steve, <laughs> did you like the fact that I... I wanted to make you an accredited trainer for the group because I'd seen your videos. I'd seen that you, the, you move forward with progress in those years. And I don't give that away lightly. You put the work in. You put the time in. You haven't done it overnight. You haven't you haven't done a, a two-week course and now you're a freaking qualified dog trainer. But when Chris Upton says you're an accredited dog trainer and he would willingly pass you on to other people in the group or people who want to contact you in your area... Were you, were you pleased about that, or, or was it like, I just don't want the asshole, really? No, no, I was absolutely over the moon, because like you said, I put put the work in. Um, I can remember when you first started doing this training exercise, which I think was about, was it four years ago, was it, about then? Yeah. And I, was, I think I rung you up and spoke to you then, and you said, don't worry, Steve, the way you're going, you will probably, you know, be able to make it, so that. That gave me a boost and of confidence to be able to just, you know, knuckle down, get the videos in, get training done, go out with people, you know, help people out within the group as well that, that have come down, that have now become friends with. So it's, I mean, it's, it's you, an absolute place to be. You've had some excellent feedback from people in the group who you've helped, though, Steve, haven't you? I mean, that must be a boost to um, you, you, the quality of your work and how you can read a dog now and how you can get the best out of them. The person as well as the dog. That's really important, isn't it? Yeah, because you've got to have a relationship with the dog as well as the, the person you're training as well, isn't you? If, if you haven't got either or either of them two, then you're going to struggle, I think. But yeah, um, I think sold a son of a video um, on me about me out of the mountain giving games to work his pointer and that, you know, and that was a nice little touch, I thought. It was very. No, it's just a nice thing to hear that kind of feedback. But when you when you listen to stuff like this, Steve, and, and no one's forcing anybody in here to write bullshit, we don't want that. Uh, very modest, always gives good, constructive, and honest feedback on Patreon. Isn't that just exactly what you want, Steve? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the good thing about Patreon is is we're not there to stag each other off. We're there to help each other. You know, whether you're just coming in. Or whether you're, you know, you know, even like us accredited trainers, I know that any one of us can pick, pick the phone up, talk to each other, and help, you know, and help each other out. So, to me, that's that speaks volumes for the group, without a doubt. Exactly, Steve. I totally agree. And the thing is, we work as a as a family, like the Corleone family. We work together, um, helping each other, but there to help others in that area that you live and. Not being funny, not everybody can afford to travel all the way down to Cornwall, to me. And if there's people in your area, or it, let, let's take um, other, other people in who are accredited, and we haven't got that many, they are accredited because they've worked to that level that I can promote them comfortably. People like Gary Marriott, he's gone on his own a lot more now, and we wish him all the best, but he's still part of the group, isn't he? And that's the important thing we've got five real real good trainers that are accredited that have not just done it in five minutes on a five minute course they put the work in they i mean i was looking at adam's dog uh the last few days where he he, he went, went a little bit quiet not putting so much up 
And there's been some wonderful photos of his dog that make me so proud that they're called that's a Corleone dog. You've got a Corleone dog. Um, it doesn't mean you've got to have a Corleone dog before I promote you. But you've got to be able to train dog to a very high standard, in my opinion. And my opinion is not pulling you up. It's telling you the truth. And I think Karen said on a live feed the other day, some of their boys can train a dog better than me. And I, I've got to agree, you can train dogs, you accredited trainers, as good as me now, because you've put the work in, you've put the time in, you've put the commitment to follow my method, and you've seen results thousands and thousands of times on videos. How many videos have I put up, Steve, on live feeds? Unbelievable, on, 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 on the internet. More than anybody else in the gun dog world, isn't it? You know? But what do we talk about, Steve? We talk about gameplay. We talk about discipline. It plays the mask, it? It's building a bond, get foundation with the dog, discipline, the 5% that we use. Um, you know, it's, it's, all, it's just goes round and round in circles, doesn't it? But it never gets boring. No, and, and, and each dog's different, and each customer's different as well. That's it, yeah, we've got that. And, and and I think that's an important part. And I love these live feeds when somebody comes on and has got the banter, the patter that you've got, Steve, because everything you're saying, I'm not, no, this hasn't been rehearsed, is it? This is just straight off the top of our head, what we're no, talking no. about. And everything you're saying is, is off the top. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I, last, I asked you last minute, didn't I? Would you fancy coming on live? Have you done it before? And you said, no, yeah. no, you haven't. So to throw you in the deep end like that, sometimes some people can be a little bit apprehensive, can't they? But you seem to like a duck to water, Steve. Uh, I wasn't, I think you're a little bit apprehensive, but obviously when you just start talking and you're talking about a subject that, that you get on with and you like, you're passionate about, then I think the best comes out. Isn't it? I, I think it's just, and that, that's the same with the group. You know, we have our chats on a Sunday night, our little enclosed chat. Yeah. And it's it's just a good place to be, isn't it, for them few hours that you're doing. But, but I prefer, I know I, I could talk shit because I think, what can I talk about tonight? And I go into different subjects. And sometimes you have a good laugh and everyone's having a laugh. But I prefer these live chats where we talk to people who've been following us for a while and they give their honest opinion of what, uh, what the group does for them and how they've achieved what they've achieved and... I put a pic, an old video of a of a girl with a dog going back 15 years. She came to me with a problem dog that was going to training classes with these so-called church halls and treat trainers and getting nowhere with the dog. And within weeks, I had her on the shoot for the first time in her life. And it changed her life. She absolutely adored working with a dog, a gun dog, on a shoot with the tuition of what I give her. I give her the tools that she can go on a shoot and work with that dog. How many times do we see it, Steve? But we somebody shares in the group somebody on the internet that's taken a dog on a shoot at freaking twelve months of age and done hardly any training with it, and it's a bag bag of nails, isn't it? Watching the video, and you think, why are you ruining the dog? Mind you, you know, going back to my dogs, that's that's how I sort of come across with you. Is my black and white cocker. Is I had her on the shoot when she was six months old, so I was over training her from the start. But although she, you know, she's she can hold her own. She's a good dog now. But yeah. I did go down the wrong route, so it wasn't through it, like your knowledge that you passed down to us, and now that that's sunk in, that you now know you don't do that. So I w I've never done that with any of the, the the two other dogs that I've got. Yeah, exactly. But but I mean. What 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 do you think is the biggest thing you learned, Steve, over all that period of time? What would you say the most important thing is the advice you could give to somebody who's starting? What would you say? Well, you got the patience, you got the gameplay, you've got to build that foundation from the start. You have that little nice partnership with your dog. And then once you've got that and you're trusting each other, then you can start to move forward quite quickly in your training. Obviously, not rushing it, but when the, you know, it's understanding when the dog's taking the training in, and be able to look at the dog and think, right, you've got that. Now you've got that, and you're you're doing it every time we, you know, we do a repetition of it. You're still doing it. Then we can now move on to something else. 
Do you think that you've learned over the years how to control drive but not destroy it? Definitely, yes. Yeah, you, you've definitely shown us how to do that. Just create the drive and then control it and bring the drive down a bit to be able to control it in the field. So it's not all about obedience to start with, is it, Steve? It's about gameplay. It's about building that bond, that trust. No, the obedience comes later on, doesn't it, really, in, in like, the call your own method of training. Yeah. So it looks like to get this tennis bracket game. It's dummies. It's getting the ball out, getting that dummy out. You know, then once they're doing that, it's working on your... Um, starting pistol and getting it used to shot and then introducing the launcher and then you know once it's happy with that then you start shooting you know shooting over the once it gets to a village to be able to do that it's just all little stepping stones that you've got to follow but you've got to master and get it right exactly go forward until you've got and and why is it so important to do it that way steve instead of just using discipline from the start well, because you'll end up with a flat, boring dog. Exactly, mate. You'll destroy the drive from the get-go, and you'll end up with a dog that's half the dog or, you know, a third of the dog that you could have had. It's, 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 that's just how it is, isn't it? And, and, and it isn't that wonderful that we've got the accredited trainers in the group that actually started off that way, suppressing the dog, and they came to me and I told them straight, if I was a dog, you would yeah. be boring. And he's just come in. He says, Ian, sorry, like, lad, I'm late. Well, he's now got two dogs. That's a fine, eh? Yeah, he's <laughs> late for a fine, yeah. He's now got dogs that people would just be jealous about, haven't he? Hasn't he? We're talking about Adam. He's got dogs that are just yeah. stunning. Stunning. They've definitely got bags of dry them dogs, without a doubt. And yet, not be... Especially Spaniel, that is a live wire. And, and, and yet, not being funny, with his disability... He's not been afraid to let that dog have that drive and that desire, and yet he's still got beautiful control over those dogs, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's yeah, a, because he's obviously he, he'd have to train slightly different than the rest of us because he needed to be able to control them early on, but he's done it in a way where he hasn't messed the drive up one bit, which is you know it's very very impressive. It's unbelievably good. I, I mean, and that's the whole point about the group, isn't it? The the, you know, the five accredited trainers that we've got have all got their own area of... Uh, they're just better in a certain area in a different way. But they all five are really good dog trainers in their own right now that you could say you would put anybody onto them because you know they're not going to feed them bullshit. They're not going to rip them off. They're going to give them the um, understanding that they need. It's the same method of training, isn't it? Obviously, which is the Corleone cool way which we've adopted. But different but personalities. Their own little twist, twist on it. That's it. It's personality. And each of our five different personalities are all different. Like we know and understand with the dogs. All the dogs are different. Yeah. So you can't treat everyone the same. Exactly. Exactly. So when when you started helping other people, Steve, did, were you surprised how fast the dog picked it up and the people picked it up? Oh, definitely, yeah. The dog's quicker than the people. <laughs> yeah, you're dead right. Yeah. You know, especially especially when you get older, the lead yourself and say to the client, you know, you just stand out the way a minute, let me work this dog for a bit, and then you can see that dog start to change and understand because your timing's right. You know, you're giving proper commands to the dog, you know, and you're, you're keeping it black and white for the dog to be able to understand and avoiding horrible, messy grey areas. Do you know, absolutely spot on, Steve. And, and and the thing is, if you, do you search the internet a lot looking for dog trainers or not really? No, no, you, no more. You don't. I found what I like. Once I like what I like, that's it. I just stick with it. And and like I said before, you know, when you like something, you try and master it and be the best you can at it. So that's that's how I do it. I I found years ago that, that to try help people. Uh, you miss the pitfalls in dog training and being ripped off by trainers who pretend they're great dog trainers, whether they're gun dog trainers or dog trainers. And I used to specifically stick really to gun dog trainers. I used to highlight them and say, you know, look at this shit. Look at how, look how rubbish this is. And all it did was cause the bitch fight on the internet. So I, 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 when we went over to Patreon 
and we've got our own Corleo Talk, and it's a private group just with Patreon members. People post videos of other dog trainers, and we break them down and we talk about them. I mean, the standard, Steve, is atrocious, isn't it, on a lot of them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But there isn't, you know, I don't name them on no. the world wide web, but I have been to another trainer other than yourself, mm. but the reason being is I wanted to use a rabbit pen, which I haven't got access to. Yeah. Now, I knew that the little ginger cocker I had, he needed to go in a rabbit pen and just be allowed to chase. Yeah. So I booked a left to be able to go in the rabbit And when I got there, he didn't even let me go in the rabbit pen. He's trying to get me to do something else and then at the end of the lesson wanted me to subscribe to his thing and I, and I thought you know what I don't want to, I want nothing to do with you you're all about drawing money in rather than helping the dog for what I need because I even accept that I'm not I'm not a novice dog trainer I know what this dog needs and he needs to go and grab a pen and be able to just chase and then we start putting the stock and then control him that way yeah he, he thought he knew better and, yeah and he didn't know jack shit is quite honest so what do you like best, Steve? Did you like it when you had free videos non-stop on the internet, on YouTube? Or do you like the fact of Patreon where it's more private, It's we don't get nowhere near as much fucking bitching? It's, well, we don't get bitching, do we? As simple as that. Um, do you think that that's a far Patreon, better format? Yeah, definitely, Chris. Patreon is, you know, for anyone that's new and, or who's just come into the group, stick with it. You know, try and get involved. You know, we're here, we're here to answer your questions. We're here to help you out. And honestly, it's the best group that you will ever have on this internet or any platform ever, in my opinion. And and do you think do you think that we got all different tiers and people can watch videos for five pound a month, Steve, and come in and watch yeah. nearly two thousand videos. And and I think the dearest is twenty pound a month, isn't it? So. I mean, not being funny, yeah. that's not the price of a cup of coffee, is it, a week? No, definitely not. I mean, and if, if you haven't got a lot of money... Sorry, Steve, go on. But if, if you want to learn and you're in this group already, then try and progress to the biggest, you know, the top tier as you can, because that's where the main learning format is, isn't it? You know, where we break, we say we're breaking stuff down and we're educating people to what's right, what we think is wrong where we could improve in other places and stuff like that. And to me, if you're if you're into wanting to train your own dog to a high standard, that's where you'll get quicker by paying that little bit of extra money. And that's not trying to get money, you know, we're not a commission here or yeah, yeah. Like that. We're not yeah. To, but that's just that by professional sort of like self being is saying to people, if you want to train your dog to a good standard quite quickly, get yourself into the whole tier. That's just that's just my opinion as well. One of the things I was watching, uh today on 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 the internet was about patreon about patreon uh started off reasonable then it started taking off and people who are doing youtube can't make the income that you can on patreon but you have to you have to be well known before you just set up a patreon site as it'll never work because people will not come in and pay money for something they can't see so because of the situation where all my videos are up on youtube and then i lost them all because of copyright uh, it was a it was a bloody con, right? And I, they just deleted thousands of videos that I spent three, four, five years putting up. I was helping thousands and thousands of people all around the world, Steve, with my my openness and my straight talking and showing discipline. One of the only trainers out there showing discipline, taking shit for it, but sticking to what he believed in, showing you how to get gameplay into the dog and get the best out of your dog, not destroyed by. It. And then. That disappeared completely. My life just turned upside down. I thought, what am I going to do? And then Soul come along and said, yeah, start Patreon, do this, do that. Get off your ass, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And it, it broke me, it did for a while. But it, I went down that road. I thoroughly enjoy Patreon now because it's a private group. It's like a private members club. You don't need to put up with the piss heads like in an ordinary fucking street, do you? A little fighting and fucking no. just talking shit. We got people in the group that are wonderful. They follow us, and the active members gain so much more, don't they? We've got silent members who just pay every month without fail. And this Patreon video that I was listening to said that that one in four people come away from Patreon within the first month. That doesn't happen with me, Stephen. I asked the question why, and it must be 
for the content we put up, the quality of the videos. Yeah, the that... Go on, Steve. Sorry. Sorry. I was agreeing the content is unbelievable and like you say for the price you're charging for it they won't ever get that anywhere else without that and they're also getting straight talking aren't they yeah yeah there's no messing about if we think it's not right you know it's constructively passed back to you in a, in a way that, you know hopefully you're not offended by it and then and then people can say in the one go on Steve go on sorry I said, and the ones that, you know, we had a couple that, you know, whatever you say to them, they just they put their head in the sand. Then after a while, they move on and then we get, you know, fresh people in and we can go again, can't we? Exactly. So the ones who want to learn will learn and the ones who don't want to listen to constructive criticism, then it's their problem. They're, they're lost. They'll end up with a shit dog. So see you later, alligator, isn't it? And the, and the other thing as well, Steve, is you can send videos to us in Corleone Talk that is on Facebook. It's a private group. You're only allowed in there if you're on Patreon. But it gives you access to post your own videos to show people your work, get feedback. But if you send them to me, I also do a voiceover and actually break those videos down and show you what you do, tell you what you're doing right and tell you what you're doing wrong. That's invaluable, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. And the amount of times that I will even look back at my own videos, you know, like the training videos that I've Come and come to you for one to one, and even the videos up and send to you. But, you know, if I'm bored, I've got five minutes of not doing it. I'll look back at them, you know, and just keep studying them, keep looking back at them. And it's like people turn up with new, you know, young puppies and all that. Some people can get bored. Oh, it's the, it's the routine. It's but it is a routine, but it and dog training can be monotonous at times. But you've got to keep going through that. And you've got to realise and be able to understand the dog for training to make it as best it can be. Right? And that's what I that's what I find out to me. I keep watching me everyone's videos, regardless of what level they're at. You can always learn something, like on timing, on on the way the handler's moving. You know, you know, you can read what the dog's doing. But if the dog's actually this, you know, engaged with the handler or it's not, you can see it all. And and I, I I do exactly the same, Steve. I put up old videos of myself, watch them, and think, "Hang on, you're doing what you're telling people not to do in that video." That was twenty years ago. It was twenty five years ago. And and what's happened is you 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 hone your skills, don't you? You get better and better the more you do it, and the more you watch yourself. The importance of having capturing that moment on a video and then being able to watch it back or get somebody to evaluate it who knows what they're talking about is so important isn't it yeah definitely because you can get no matter how good good a trainer you are you can get blase of what you're doing can't you you know mm. what i mean you mm. can, sometimes sometimes you, you you know you should have got down and line the dog up and send it out rather than just get you know call it to get out or send it out if you know what i mean sometimes you've got to put yourself out a bit more you know, it's, you, you think you know better sometimes, the better you get at training. So you've got to keep refreshing your brain to keep yourself on top of it. And we've had many of people come in. Yeah, yeah, it does, Steve. And we've had many of people come in the group over the years and stick with the group for three, four, five years, train a dog to a reasonable standard, but then think they've mastered it and they go off doing their own thing. That's up to each individual, Steve, but they're not learning as much as someone who's sticking to it and the, it's important the feedback that the um, accredited trainers give on videos of other people because it shows me their standard of knowledge and understanding. And I can't promote other people as an accredited trainer if you're not willing to put your head on the block and say, this is what I feel about the video. Because if I don't agree with you and you're nowhere near reading what's happening, then there's no point in you being an accredited trainer in my eyes. It's not about there's a certificate. You've done a three-week course. I've charged you £2,000. I don't charge any extra for anybody to be an accredited trainer. You have to earn that that reference, that um, accolade, uh, that award for the group. And I think that our accredited trainers are of such a high standard. It just makes me so proud, Steve, that, that, that they've achieved it by following what we, what we say the Corleone way. 
with a slaughter in it. I can remember when you come back like four years ago when you wanted to set this training exercise up. I can remember you saying then you you know you want people across the country to be able to help other people out and get these dogs around the country to good standards. And and you've achieved it, mate. You know, as much as you're proud, I think everyone in the group that I talk to, and I know the five accredited trainers will be just as proud to, to to be a part of what we've got. But wouldn't it have been nice, Steve, if we could have had twenty? accredited trainers up and down the country so people aren't getting turned over by fools out there but unfortunately if you're not willing to put the work in i'm not willing to put my name next to your name you, you, you understand about the quality of what we need in the group don't you yeah you've got and you've got to stick to that as well i mean if you start you know letting people become accredited just for the sake of being accredited then you're going to lose the standard that you set in you, and the standard we've got is high. So um, I think you're doing the right thing. I think you need to keep that. It is once you think they're ready, then you accredit credit them. Until then, they've got to keep putting the videos in and doing the training and doing that homework. One of what like our what we've done. Yeah, one of the hard things, Steve, to assess really is. The proactive people in the group, and we've got a lot of them, we've got a lot of them coming through and getting better and better, but not ready to be accredited trainers. But they're active all the time. They write comments. They're, they're interactive, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, we can see their progress. We can, we can see the input, the keenness that they've got. The ones that go off and don't say nothing, but they're in the group for a long period of time, I can't evaluate them because they may be great. They may have learned so much. But how can I evaluate them if they're not putting their work up? Now, I'm not saying you've got to you've got to be an accredited trainer. No way. Each to their own. And I think you get great value for money if you never see nothing. You never get involved. But I would love to, I would love your opinion. Do you think the people who actually get actively involved in the group get some more value out of it? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. And you're going to get a percentage of people that, you know, they might, they might not want to be a, tra like a trainer other than to train their own dog. Do you know what I mean? It's, so you're going to have different courses for courses isn't it, across the, the way it's going. Yeah. But, you know, if you do an apprenticeship, Steve, and you just do three months of that apprenticeship, you learn how to, 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 to do certain things and then you off and do your own thing. You're never going to be a, yeah. a true skilled craftsman, are you, at your, at your job, are you? No, but there's, that's the good thing we're learning is regardless of what profession you're in, you know, like I'm a mechanic by trade, so I've done a four-year, five-year apprentice at that, so I'm qualified in that, but I don't do that no more because I don't like doing it. Yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? But I've put that four or five years in, if I wanted to go back to it, I'd be able to pick it up, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same as what you developed with the, you know, the Patreon and the Corleone training method. You know, we, we do, well, what's it, four years and it since you started the training, so now we're accredited. So there you go. To me, we've done a decent apprenticeship, as, as you say. Yeah, without fail. Without fail. And Karen says, I'm proud of every single one of you guys that are out there trying their best and putting the hard work in. Chris says, Chris Laval says, we are proud of each other. And credit to you, Chris, for believing in your own methods and having the commitment to put time and effort into the group. It, it it's the best. And, you know that makes yeah, me that, cool guys. that makes me so proud of the group because no one's talking shit here. People have followed me for years. You don't follow a trainer, do you? If if the trainer just feeds you bullshit and you move on, don't you? You look for the trainer you want. When yeah. people can say, "No, I'm quite happy to stay with the trainer I've got," because the trainer gets gets results. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it, Steve? Really? Yeah. So, you know, if there was other like you keep saying, if there was other trainers putting the content out there like like you have mm. and showing the methods of how they're doing it as well, then you know, perhaps you could sort of like be swayed to go some somewhere else or or join to both sides of it, if you know what I mean. But there ain't, is it? So but what we've, what we've what you've got and what we've got is a good thing. But when I started, Steve, there was no one doing it. Now all of a sudden, there's loads of people trying to do it, aren't they? Loads of people yeah. trying to monetize it. Hey, say again, Steve. I said they're fucking shit, aren't they? That's 
I like a spit talking guy. <laughs> They're only selling an ideology, aren't they? They're not being truthful, are they, Steve? No, that's right. Yeah, they're, they're just like you say, man. What they all snake sellers, isn't it? They're, they're fucking wasted, aren't they? Really, a lot of them. But but isn't it wonderful as well, Steve, that I had all that shit going back there years, and how many people stuck with me? How many people believed in? I love dogs. I train dogs to an eye standard. Yes, I use discipline. But the way they try to throw me under the bus and 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 uh, wipe me off the internet, it didn't work because I'm the most successful gun dog trainer in the UK who gets paid to do something he loves by putting up stuff on the internet. Isn't that wonderful, Steve? Really, the support and 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 it's it's these guys in the group. We've only got 23 people watching at the moment, but that'll get watched because you can watch it again if you're doing something tonight or you you can't watch it tonight. We've got the same people in the group, the loyal followers, haven't we? The, the, and, and we could name them, couldn't we? we? We know who they are because they're just loyal. Yeah. Well, like, I'm going back to, like, when I first picked your videos and up and that, and, like, seeing the early ones with Wiz and, and uh, Keeper and that, you, you know, your older dogs, and they were just absolutely mind-blowing. And I, and I looked at them and I thought, that's how I want my dog to work. I want it to work in the field. I want to chase in a pheasant. If I blow the spot whistle, I want it to spin round, park its ass, look at me and go, wait, now what do you want me to do? And, you know, and you've taught us how to achieve that, which is fantastic. And do you, do you know what, what you've done? To, you know. Do you know what's funny, though, Steve, is, is, is like I've said to people before, Wiz is probably in the top five of the dogs I've had that were trained to such a high standard um, that I was so proud of and I won competition with them. Uh, at, at the end of the day, because of technology, I can't show you the first 25 years of my dog training when I was winning and being successful. I can show you the certificates, but I can't show you the videos. Just imagine I could go back and have the quality of the video and show you the stand I was when I was in my 30s. I didn't look like a split mattress yeah, then. <laughs> Say again, Steve. What you like split pin, then, you? <laughs> you like a split pin, then, you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but isn't it funny that as, as a dog trainer, you you reach a peak. And I've I've said this before that I used to look at the old timers and think, "Frick, no, you got no timing. You haven't. You don't know how to do that." Nowhere near as good as I do, and I'm a youngster, and I haven't been doing it long. But look at me. I'm something special. I didn't realize I was missing out on a lot of things because I thought I knew it, but I didn't really know it. Now I'm older. I've got the knowledge, but I haven't got the, the timing quite as good or the fitness quite as good as like it used to. Well, nowhere near as good as fitness. And, and, and you, you peak. And I didn't realize until now at my age that when I was talking to those sort of film stars in their day, but old film stars who'd done it, been there, seen it, won the competition, I used to think, Frick, no, there's no, I'm as good as any of these. Now I realise, because with wisdom, you, you go up that ladder and then you start coming down the ladder. But wisdom, like Gary Wilkes, is unbelievable, isn't it? It's unbelievable the wisdom that man's got with the knowledge and understanding. It doesn't mean he can get out and train a dog exactly the same way, but the knowledge they've got, people aren't willing to wind their neck in and listen to these people, are they? They just talk, they just want to talk shit. And on the internet, we can read right through them, people like me and Gary, and we can go, You're just a freaking arsewipe. You've freaking been doing it two minutes and you think you know everything. That you can't know everything in this game, Steve, in two minutes, can you? Because each dog and each person is different. Nigel says, Nigel Moore says, plenty of good tunes played on a film. Trust him to say that. An old fiddle. <laughs> I wasn't going to say an old fiddle. I was going to say. Wisdom comes with age, doesn't it? It's like um, going back to your videos and that, and like what you've done for the group. That's why, for me, myself, I wanted to buy a calling on Spaniel. It's because from the start on YouTube, you were putting the content of your videos up to nothing. And I thought, you know, what you're doing is brilliant. It's out for so many of us who wanted to learn, brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously meeting you in person, 
you you know you're exactly the same man as you are on the on camera. You know, you're, you're great to be around and all that. So I wanted to give a little bit of what I can back to you. So that's why I wanted to buy a Corleone Spaniel. One because I know your breathing's right. You know you don't want noise. You don't breathe in legs. You know your dogs. You do breeds are all top quality powerhouses of of what we need in the field. Yeah, and that, and that that to me, Steve, is really important because it means more than just monetary gain. That the quality of your lines have to be quality because you have a a credibility that you've built up over the years, and you know that dogs have gone to people, turned into wonderful dogs. And when you when when you watch those dogs, when somebody gets hold of them who's got a little bit of knowledge, and then they gain more knowledge, more knowledge, and they produce a Corleone dog of that standard. I mean, I just think to myself, not only is it in the breeding, not only is it in the training, but it's in the dedication of those people who have bought them as well. And that makes me so freaking like, it makes me, sometimes this odd, odd bastard, right, who speaks his mind, sometimes I have a freaking tear in my eye for this shit, you know, because I think to myself, I don't know anybody who's done this in this way. Yeah, the passion, Steve, that's what it is, yeah. yeah. That's the passion, yeah. Plus, he's looking at myself in the video and thinking, shit, you're getting old. <laughs> Actually, that's yeah, but the way it's going, the, the knowledge, there's going to be a Corleone dog that's going to win a trial in a minute. It's somewhere up and down the country, isn't there? With, where, well, we've, had, Cor we've had Corleone dogs win trials. We've had Corleone dogs win trials in the yeah. past. But years ago, before I fell out with the trial world, the trial world were really into me because I was winning on a regular basis. They're such a fickle lot, the trial people. It's unbelievable. They follow the in crowd. Yeah. They don't follow the knowledge and the understanding. They follow the in crowd. I put up a video with a Labrador uh, today. I'm not going to mention the guy's name. A panel judge. Uh, I'm not even going to mention where what area he's in because somebody would work it out. I watched it. What it shit, Steve? Awful. Very, very messy was my comment. Yeah, very, very messy. And and you know what? He won. He won. He won yeah. the test. He won the open test. That's an open test. If you send the dog out, it does three circles before freaking getting out. It shows the dog is not a confident dog. All right, and to get yeah, it, he's nine month old puppy would beat that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the thing is, if I put that up in the big wide world web uh, and wrote what I said in the group, people would go. Oh, you're just having a go at that bloke because he's been an A panel judge for 35 years. It's embarrassing, exactly what Tim said. It was embarrassing. But the, because you speak the anyone, truth. Anyone who, knows how, anyone who knows to see the quality of someone's training will look at that and go, that is bollocks. That is a flat, boring, clueless trainer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a dog that's ruined. Yeah, exactly. But don't you think we should talk about that in the group? Don't you think that people should be able to criticise and, and credit people? I mean, there's there's another guy, I'm not mentioning his name, do not share my videos. Well, don't put them on the fucking internet then because you're asking everybody to watch them. It's embarrassing. I, I just think it's sad, isn't it? Surely, if you're putting stuff on the internet, you'd want people to share them if you're proud of what you do. Sure you are, yeah. But he, yeah. but he don't like yeah. criticism. Nobody likes criticism, but there's a difference between constructive criticism. We wouldn't progress without criticism, Karen. I agree. I agree 100%. Some people, some people just don't like being told full stop, do they? And like we've had them in the group. Remember famous Robert? Yeah, yeah. He was found money. And then the other one, that, um, we won't mention his name, but... Uh, the other the other thing is, well, Steve, is how many ex-policemen become dog trainers overnight? And they all seem to want to go down the gun dog route. I mean, not being funny, if you've had an Alsatian, I mean, you've got a sniff, you've got a sniff in it. You got, I miss Robert. So <laughs> no names, no names, no names on. <laughs> There's a million Roberts out there, so we'll be all right. Yeah. What about what about that um, very famous uh, coloured chap who, who said he threw a dog over a balcony and wanted to <laughs> give, give, give the dog a limb? Yeah. Want to give the dog a limb? I mean, was, yeah. was his name Robert as well? <laughs> We've had some 
I can't remember. There's just so many. We've had some funny ones over the years, haven't we? Where they, they come in trying to tell me what I've been wrong. I'm going, well, hang on, I've looked at your following. You've got 300 people following you. I mean, well, I've got thousands and thousands of people. Legend as that Robert is chasing his dog across the desert. <laughs> We've had some <laughs> but but the other thing is, well, Steve, we've got a sense of humour in our group as well as we 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 can have a laugh as well. We're not we're not so yeah. serious. We we're stuck up. Yeah, we we think we know it all. We 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 are a group of people who just love training dogs. We're getting results, and if you don't don't want to follow us, don't fucking watch it. It's as simple as that, isn't it? It's, it's like people from all different. And Sue's going to read. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Gary said, best advice I've had from you has been criticism. It's how you learn and you need to take it on board. Thank you. 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 If you're not willing to learn, then why come to me? If you're willing to to, to strip off and, and and open your eyes and see your mistakes, and I show you mistakes, we've seen so many people over the years where they've come here, they've gone, yes, but I've got this certificate. I, I've been to this training class with the Gun Dog Club, and I don't give a fuck where you've been. Your dog's fucking useless. It won't even sit there. It's whining. It's making a noise. Why are you trying to trial that dog that's making a noise? Because because I, I was going to this trainer and this trainer said they could stop it. No, you, you you never stop that noise. You may drop the noise, but you'll never stop. It. You've been ripped off. You've been turned over. Because these people get on the bandwagon with these clubs, and I was on the clubs. I've been there and seen, it, so I know exactly how it works. They become field trial secretary or test secretary or trial secretary. Oh, that means that I've thirty people a week contacting me. What, do you know anybody who can help me with my dog? Yes, I can because I'm a semi-professional. I worked in a bakery or I worked down the freaking as a secretary. But yes, on the weekend, I can help you. And then people haven't got a clue. And the problem is people fall for it because, oh, they're the test secretary. They're the trial secretary. They're the, they're the treasurer of the club. That doesn't make you a freaking good dog trainer. No. I've seen no, it so many times, Steve. Go on, Steve. Sorry, mate. Yeah, so if you're, you're a good accountant you can add all the, the prices up and sort all the um, tests out and stuff like that. But other than that, when it comes to training dogs, you ain't got a clue. Um, like you say, because they're titled and you land out a certificate willy-nilly, it makes you, you know, my dog's now passed the, the gold dog certificated gold, silver and bronze award or whatever. That are. So like that like old shit, isn't it? What do you think about this, Steve? Well, this is it. I won't tell you who said it at the moment. Can't be going to Chris Upton for a beast in. Came away with a lot better understanding and loved it. Thanks, Chris. Don't some people like pain? Yeah. Oh, Sean Raymond. Yeah. He's so funny, Sean, isn't he? He's lovely. Uh, uh, I wonder whether he's still on because Sean asked. Hang on, let's go back. It was a while ago. It's on a roll now. No, I'm trying to find it. Um, here we go. Here it is. Um, Sean did ask ages ago, and I was going to say if he's still on. He said to Steve, "It is how's the Springer, Steve, Billy's brother." Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, yeah, he's absolutely, absolutely brilliant, Sean. Yeah, I'd like to see some video one, Sean. You said you were going to put some up. Yeah, you did, Sean. You said you were going to show us the quality of your training. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. <laughs> She's thrown. They've all thrown you under the bus now, Seanie boy. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're busy in the garage with a bit of time in. Um, Tim Weston says, what I love about Gary, he says, Tim, you're doing a good job. Or Tim, that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I think they enjoy a beast in some people, Steve, don't they? Yeah, well, there's just some people thrive on that. Some people like, like the dogs. Some people can have more pressure. Yeah. Some people can't. It's on the top of do Billy list. Uh, Billy is mega. I love him. He's mega. He loves him. He loves him. So that's that's really important, isn't it? That's really important because that's, that's what Adam says. Yeah, but the difference with Sean Sue is, is Sean let me train the dog and I became ill, Ill. And, yeah. and then he's taken the dog, you know, only half trained and he's done a he's gone on get on with himself and I just can't wait to see him. But 
isn't it wonderful when he sees Mega on another? And that's really important. Get the videos up, Sean. Yeah, we want to see the videos. Nothing like a beast in from Chris brings back memories. Attention! <laughs> honestly, honestly. It brings my friends back to Adam. Now, like Gary says, it's done with love. It's done with humour. It's done with a pattern, isn't it? At the end of the day, what you see is what you get. I don't think that. Now, I broke Adam, didn't I? We broke Adam. We took him to a, we took, yeah, he's boring. We took him to a new level, Adam, didn't we? <laughs> And, uh, well, Adam broke him and then come back better, didn't he? So that's how it works, right? Yeah, but he took it personal rather than I said, if I was your dog, you'd be boring, not Adam's boring. <laughs> <laughs> but but he's got such a sense of humor as well, hasn't he, Adam? He's it, 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 just yeah. a pleasure to have in the group, isn't he? You know, like like a lot of people, we've got such a diverse group of people, and uh, I just don't think. Um, I just wouldn't have thought that we could create such a fantastic group as we we have, and, and the friendship that these people have got with each other. Some walks of life, isn't it? Walks of life singing off the same in which is the good thing. <laughs> so, so Adam's on one again. Look, you called me boring, and then sold me an absolute psychopath of a spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> no, we thought we thought we'd keep you on your toes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, your toe. No, you can't. No, you got toes, don't you? <laughs> Tim Weston, I cry all the way down the motorway, Gary. Oh no! <laughs> but I think I think it's rubbed, I think it's rubbed off because Gary Marriott says it the way he sees it, exactly the same as me. And at the end of the day, sometimes we can be direct. Wouldn't you rather have the truth than bullshit? Being fed bullshit. That was another reason for coming to you, Chris. I like your honest, you know, I like the straight up talking approach and the honesty. That's that's if you want to learn, that's where you learn. Now, the thing is, you you said earlier in 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 this interview that uh, you don't like blowing your own trumpet and giving yourself credit for this. At the end of the day, I've got to be totally honest with the group here. If you buckle down. And done what Steve has done. Steve has been, and I'm not just saying this because he's on here. Steve has been one of the most friendly, keen, enthusiastic people in the group that I've ever known. And 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 we've known a lot of people. So you know, I I, I just got to say, credit where credit's due. I I found that you were such an asset for the group that. Um, Honestly, you make me so proud, Steve, of what you've achieved, your temperament, the way you help people, the way you reach out, the way you've gone out and worked with people, give them, give them the facilities that you've got, shared it with them. I know trainers over the years, you know, would never share facilities of ground where you've got game and you can, you can, because people nick it. People freaking turn up and freaking make all the money to yeah. keep us. And so when, when we find somebody like that, a rare commodity like yourself, I just, I mean, what you've done to Soul, you've changed his life. I mean, he changed my fucking life when he came here. <laughs> yeah, he, he, Soul's now got a pointer that he hasn't got a chance around the countryside anymore. And that's, so, and that's one. Nothing else, that's funny. Yeah, but, but also, it saves me the headache because you're doing it. No, I'm only joking. He's a lovely, <laughs> he's a lovely chap. But he's complicated. He's complicated. And I like that. Because I don't think everybody should be the same, but some people will gel better with other people. And he thinks that you're a gentle teddy bear, Steve. <laughs> well, it's, don't poke me with a stick too hard. It's like anything, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. It's a different side of you if they poke you with a stick, wouldn't they, Steve? Yes. You being a yeah, you yeah. being a lurcher boy, terrier boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. it's funny. Is I'm older and wiser. It, it hurts these days, but you're still not frightened of it if you had to. Exactly, you to them, exactly. Hey, yeah. you'd die. You'd die in the attempt, wouldn't you, if you had to? If you really had to. Without a doubt. Yeah. Steve is young enough yeah. to be Chris's. Be like... Hear what that freaking Julian Lee says. Steve is young enough to be Chris's son, a proud father. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. <laughs> I like Adam. I like Adam. Oh, she's always like Adam. I wouldn't have followed you for nearly 10 years if I didn't love it. 
Oh, frick it. Just give me away. You stop me, lot. I want this attitude. On, I want this opinion on the internet that he's an odd bastard to get on with. I don't want you freaking selling me short now. I need, I've got a, I've got a persona I've got to live up to. <laughs> and there is a question. There is a question from a Nigel Rudd. Well, I haven't seen before. Point of interest oh. is wine incurable. <laughs> well, you have to ask Steve. <laughs> listen. Only if you listen to your trainer. Do you know who Nigel Rudd is? I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Jerry. <laughs> who do you go to, Nigel, for your training? Come on, come on, Nigel. Who do you go to for training? So anyway, um, we've only we've only got five minutes left, and and Steve's been on the phone for a freaking whole hour. Can you tell me, guys and girls, what do you think about tonight's live feed? Because like I do with some of the videos, I've been to Gary once, says Nigel. Um, I don't say everything when I put a video. Sometimes I ask you for your feedback so you don't get my influence. What do you think? What do you think about? this live feed tonight could you give me some feedback i'll read it out so nigel moore bloody marvelous he doesn't sort that in the freaking army does he um adamson loved it sue you fantastic great night again says tim weston nine out of ten because you can't get ten says karen of course you can get 10 out of 10. <laughs> tracy does great loved it abadell french 10 out of 10 there you can you can can't you get 10 out of 10. brilliant like these types of chats awesome chris very enjoyable great listen loved it great to catch up again and you sean and 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 that's what it's about guys you know some days i come on here i've got no one to talk to i tell you what's happened in the week i talk some shit, but i try to be there on a regular basis because the world is so fucked up in it. Isn't it nice to have a, just a general chit chat with each other? And then on Patreon, we go into some deep, dark subjects sometimes, don't we? Ask Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Barrett says, Before we wrap it up, go for it, Steve. Before we wrap up, it would be nice to pick a few more on Patreon on the Sunday night, wouldn't it? A little bit of a chat and new faces. Yeah, definitely, you'll definitely learn something if you get your asses in there. And the thing is, it's not costing nothing, is it? We don't charge for that extra. Well, when we do the training seminars around the country, uh, and hopefully now we're getting a little bit better, I'm hoping to start them again. We don't charge group members. We just literally bring each other together. We train with each other. Oh, what's Tracy Dodds doing? She's freaking pulling a monkey eyes, uh, over, uh, hands yeah. over her eyes, laughing. Yeah, she's remembering Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, we won't talk about what happened on Sunday, Trace. Yeah, oh, what happens on a Sunday stays in Sunday. <laughs> airy <laughs> chest, airy dance. Chest. Yeah. I'm stuck it for this Sunday. <laughs> you missed it. Oh, it was hilarious, Steve. It was absolutely yeah. hilarious. But the thing is, I was um, it's a hard. Wet my grandson's baby's head Sunday, so I was a bit worse for wear. So uh, I do apologise for not being about. No, not a problem, Steve. No problem. And congratulations, mate. Wonderful oh, isn't it, being you. a granddad, isn't it? Wonderful being a granddad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the next chapter of my life, being a granddad now as well. So that's, that's a nice little miracle that's turned up. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant. And and what we say is on a on a Sunday on a live feed on Cordio Talk, we we literally what what is said in there stays in there to a certain extent it doesn't broadcast for the whole world to see so we can be a little bit more direct if we want to be without offending so many snowflakes because this is what the world's becoming it steve they've become so offended they want to put up their stuff and if you criticize it they want to throw their toys out the pram and say you're just picking on me don't they yeah that's right without a doubt yeah so what i'd like to do everybody i sorry steve go on mate I said, and the other thing is, you know, people are now trying a dog. But, you know, it's not a lot of money, like you said, but they got to come in, they got to pay for it, and then they're getting the right advice. They're not getting turned over like they, like they would somewhere else or on other groups, you know? Absolutely, absolutely spot on. So I, I want to thank you very much indeed, Steve. 
for tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I said I said last week uh, it was one of the better ones. I think this week's it. I just think that uh, it's bringing people in who's been in the group for a while. Nothing has been practiced or written down. It's literally off the top of your head what we're talking about. We just hit those subjects, and I just think uh, it's been. Inf- Say again, Steve. So it's like being at a pub talking bollocks, isn't it? Lovely. <laughs> Never mind the bollocks, sure, sure, dog. That's exactly what he said, isn't it? And that's exactly what Karen said. He said bollocks to Steve. And other people who've not been on the group before think, hang on, why is he being rude to Stevie boy? But we know what bollocks really mean. Never mind the bollocks. Show us your dog. Uh, he says, well done, Steve. Been a pleasure. Bollocks, Steve. And the Corleone family. Well done, Steve. Good listen, says Graham. Yeah. And that's what it's that's what it's about. Brilliant, Steve. You're a star. Thanks a lot, mate. Catch you later. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers mate. Bye. Bye. Wasn't that wonderful, everyone? Absolutely fantastic. I he just held held the show together, didn't he? Thank God we got wingmen like Steve. And that's what it's about. It's um you, you can't be do you know, isn't it a shame, everybody, if you think about it, that we haven't got these film stars who are willing to come on and talk, talk sense, talk open, talk about the politics, talk about the reality, talk about the real world, about dog training. And yet we're a like-minded group who all support each other. So I want to thank you from my heart, for all you people, me and Sue, for all you people who have followed me, who have supported me, who have continued to support me without your help. I'd be sitting in the corner, twiddling my thumbs, talking to myself. On that note, I'm going to leave you all. Good night, and thanks very much for tuning in. Chris Upton, signing off with Darling Wife. What a great night, guys. Is Steve Bollocks. Is, is Steve Bollocks. Is Steve Bollocks. Steve, it, hang on. What a great night. Does she, does she speak English? What a great night. Great guy, Steve. Oh, what a great guy. What not great night. Yes, <laughs> What a great night. Great guys, Steve. Bollocks and take care. Take care, everyone. She's freaking perfect, isn't it? Honestly, I thought it was Gary Marriott was perfect. It's my wife. Good night, all. <laughs>